Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another special Saints Insider Short. Zach Ewing with Jeff Duncan here, continuing our Tipping Point season preview series. Uh, talked with Luke Johnson yesterday about his feature on Derek Carr. Be sure to check that out at NOLA.com uh, slash Saints if you haven't already. Just a, a, a great in-depth look at, at Derek Carr and what he means to the Saints and, frankly, what the Saints mean to him at this point in his career. Um, and so we will continue today our next story. And again, we're going to have one feature story for you every weekday between now and the regular season opener, uh, September 10th against the Tennessee Titans, with the exception of Labor Day. So after today, we'll go to Tuesday. We'll have the next one. Um, and today, Jeff Duncan wrote about Pete Carmichael, the Saints offensive coordinator. And Carmichael is a big story, of course, because not a lot of people, Jeff, were happy with the Saints play calling last year. Some of that may be personnel, the quarterback, um, but the story was Carmichael didn't really want the job. He kind of reluctantly took it, so the story goes, and, and the play calling was tepid, and everyone was sort of thinking he was going to be replaced after the season, but now he's back. Yeah, it's a good point, Zach. I mean, I, th I think we tend to scapegoat people. Um, you know, it, it's – we. I think – Sean Payton used to always say, you know, everybody looks for one thing that went wrong, right? And make they want to simplify it and make it make one reason for for whatever the problem was. And the offensive Saints' offensive of problems were probably a lot more extensive than just the play calling. Looks, uh, Pete Carmichael is the first to admit that he needs to do better, but just talking to people inside the building, uh, you know, up and down the organization. Uh, they feel like the, the biggest issue was the quarterback play by far. And that limited a lot of what Pete Carmichael could do offensively in the play calling. So by by going out and getting Derek Carr and giving him what they think is at least a top, top 15 quarterback in the league, a veteran quarterback with nine years of experience, they think that will allow the offense to open up. And Pete Carmichael even said that he's looking forward to having – car because of his ability to get to the line of scrimmage and make these checks get the saints in the right play out of the wrong play uh, that's something they didn't do a lot of the last two years just because the quarterback played they didn't really want that they didn't want those bells and whistles uh, on their shoulders uh, Derek Carr likes that very much similar to Drew Brees so we'll see if it plays out but that is basically the narrative coming out of Saints camp as to why they didn't make a change yeah and and you know I think we saw in the first preseason game, and you mentioned this in your column. I'm going to show it here. This is um, our tipping point series for today. The link will be in the description of this video, but Saints offense has to be better in 2023. Pete Carmichael knows it. And you can see you kind of go into what we saw from that one series in the preseason game against the Chiefs with the number one offense. And that's more of, of what we should be looking for, right? Yeah, I think so. The, the Saints were down at the bottom of the league last year in pre-snap motion they were down near the bottom of the league and pre-snap play action and look that wasn't by accident I mean that's just the way the offense played out because they had so many injuries they had to kind of simplify things they think with Derek Carr back a healthy Michael Thomas uh, these young players like Chris Olave and Rashid Shahid that were rookies last year playing key roles they couldn't really get too complex and I think each year that this core is together They'll get a little more compli uh, complex, a little more sophisticated in the offense. That's the way it worked under Drew Brees. I think sometimes people forget, Zach, you know, when the, the Saints started this juggernaut offense back in the Peyton Brees era, it started pretty slow. It didn't start out like it ended up. Uh, you know, the first couple of years, I mean, you go back and look, Drew Brees' first game, I point this out all the time, I think his first win against the Cleveland Browns, I think he threw for like 160 or 170 yards. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it took a while for them to add layers to the offense. And I think we'll see something similar here. I don't think they're going to come out of the gate in week one and just start lighting the world on fire. But because of these things I'm talking about, a new quarterback, some emerging second-year receivers, uh, also Jawan Johnson, who's a young player at a new position kind of emerging, uh, you know, I think this offense is going to continue to get better as the year goes on and a little more sophisticated as it as it goes. Yeah, absolutely. And and it sounds like Pete Carmichael energized by Derek Carr like the rest of the building is. And that fits into our season preview theme, the tipping point of, look, this could go one of two ways for the Saints, but but one of those ways is that it could go very, very well. This could be a very good team and a, a playoff contender deep into the playoffs. 
Um, and Pete Carmichael could be a big part of that. Yes, I, I think that's the hope inside the building is that the, 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 Pete Car the, the confidence with Pete Carmichael is still very strong uh, from the head coach to the general manager, even ownership. I mean, uh, he's been around a long time. They know what they've got in Pete Carmichael. And I should add this, and I didn't go into too much detail in the story on this, but they did look around last offseason, you know, this, this past offseason, just to see what the landscape was for offensive coordinators. They surveyed, there were a lot, if you remember, Zach, there were a lot of offensive coordinator hirings this offseason. And the, they looked at the candidates internally uh, at, outside the building as well, and they didn't find anyone that they felt like was as qualified or as accomplished as Pete Carmichael. So it wasn't like they didn't look into it, but they just felt like they know they know what Pete Carmichael is, and they feel like if they give him better tools, he'll be able to uh, – you know, accomplish more of the goals that they set out to get, uh, set out to achieve. A lot rides on Pete Carmichael. A lot rides on the 2023 Saints season. It is our tipping point preview part two. Uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. I'll sit down with Rod Walker. He's got a story coming on Dennis Allen, the big man, and how he has changed this offseason and what he looks for in 2023. Until then, he's Jeff Duncan. I'm Zach Ewing. We'll be back with a full episode of Saints Insider this Friday afternoon, September the 1st. So check that out later this afternoon and enjoy the weekend.